Okay, well, let's find some used Rolex watches. All right, and that's the mechanical one, yeah? That's cool, man. Yeah, already been one year, yeah. Over one year. Does, yeah. it, does it run well? Yeah, it's doing very well, yeah. Okay, yeah. one year. Cool, man. Enjoy. It's a Mariner. I asked this gentleman for directions. He was very nice. We talked watches for a little bit. I noticed he was wearing the ceramic date sub. Now, eventually he admitted it was fake, but it's a very good fake. And unless you're looking at the real one right next to it, I think it would fool many people. The fake Rolex has almost faded text. It's not as bright white and clear and decisive as on the real Rolex. And down where it says Submariner, you'll notice that the font is different. The font on the date wheel is probably off. And I'm not sure that real Submariners have a polished clasp. I don't think they do. But other than that, scarily good fake. Central World, a huge shopping complex about five minutes from Scion Paragon where I visited the authorized dealer. All of these shops are together on the fifth floor. Let's check out what they've got. Two of my favorite modern pieces right there together. Are they selling this as a set so you can double wrist it? Hey, you could. A Yacht Master on the right, a Sermit on the left. Now you'll notice that the selection is very sparse and it's very piecemeal. And I imagine people buy from the AD, stop by at a couple of these shops and sell to whoever's paying the most. And so you have sort of a motley collection of these modern Rolex watches. And there are pre-ceramics mixed in, but not at this particular shop. A modern date sub and its green bezeled counterpart. I really like those Rolex plates. And up there, top right, that is an all gold Pepsi. Now you'll notice that none of the prices are written. You have to ask about each piece. And I don't know why they do that. Maybe because the price depends on who's asking or maybe prices just change too quickly to have tags out there. But you might think that you can get a deal here because Thailand's a relatively inexpensive country, but that's not the case. All of these pieces were much more expensive than their counterparts in Japan. Outrageous bling or a functional GMT bezel. The choice is yours. Every single piece in this shot is gold of some sort including this 36 millimeter date just with a wooden dial and an all gold date just is kind of rare but one with a wooden dial even more rare very retro look and for the golfer out there finally some pre-ceramics two explorers a daytona two date subs and an explorer no surprise i gravitate towards a gmt the 16710 with the white dial this is a 40 millimeter watch Holes case, Swiss made dial, and it looks to have a solid in-link bracelet. So this would have been made just after the turn of the millennium in that sweet spot when you could get a Holes case, but the solid in-link bracelet. So a late A serial, a P, a K, or an early Y. Now it could just be the horological paranoia you get in a country like Thailand where fakes abound, but those in-links seem to be not quite flush to the case, and I'd want to check that out. Contrast it with this black doll version and you can really see the difference in those end links. This has a no holes case. So this would be a late 2002 on up to around 2007. So a late Y serial could be an F serial, a D serial, or an early Z. A really good clean looking date sub 16610. This would be the same age as that previous black doll to explore too. To its right, a 36 millimeter Explorer. Now this is one from before it jumped to 39 and then back to 36. And another 116610. Note the S in Submariner. The font is different. This is known as a straight S. Kind of looks like a backward Z and you can really see the difference when you compare it to that previous 16610. And we can't leave out the Diamond Dial Daytona. A 41 millimeter Blue dial date just, probably one of the most sporty looking date justs. I really like this version with the oyster bracelet, the smooth bezel, but I would be going for the 36. A two tone white dial Sky Dweller full set. This one sold out of Thailand. You know, I knew a guy that got one of these for free. He reached out and tried to rub it in my face. And uh, you don't want to do that because karma can perhaps come back to bite you in the ass. Some old Rolex swag. I love this stuff couple of Rolex pillows. I don't know what those other Rolex things are, but I like them. A Rolex pen that sells for quite a bit on eBay. It's kind of plasticky. I'm not really a fan of it. And a tie. 
And the ties that the RSC staff is wearing now is a lot more tasteful. This looks like an 80s tie and some Patek swag up top. Now, if I had to go diamond dial bling, I think I'd go for that Yacht Master right there. There's something really attractive about it. I love the shape and the mother of pearl dial. It's certainly an eye-catching watch, but manages it without being too over the top. A tritium dialed 14060 no date sub, probably my favorite watch in terms of pure aesthetics. I love the minimalist two lines on it, the lack of a date, just a beautiful watch. This is the date version, the 16610. It's a later version, you can tell because of the engraved rehot. Now you can't go wrong with any Submariner, but proportion wise, you really can't beat the pre ceramic no date subs. Look at the rehot, how thin that is, and contrasted with the thicker rehot on the date version. Brace yourselves for some cool vintage subs. On the left, that's a 5513. On the right, a triple zero, the 168000. This is a true transitional sub. They only made it for, well, less than a year, around 1988. Now, the only difference between this and the previous version, the 16800, is that this is incorporating the 904L steel. This is the first Submariner they incorporated that new metal in. And an interesting aspect of this watch is that the triple zero reference number, the 168000 reference number, is on the case of the watch, but they actually never put it on the papers. They listed it as a 16800 on the papers. Beautiful tritium hands, tritium dial, and check out that pip. Now, this must be a thing with the triple zeros because a viewer, Dr. Raymond, has a beautiful example of one of these and the pip is just as unique. So this is a really cool, very rare transitional date Submariner. This is a no box, no papers example. And here's the price in bot that comes out to 11,260 USD. So not really that expensive, but you'd kind of want this as a full set to be as collectible as it could and should be. Here's the 5513, the very last of the pre-ceramic no-date subs with the acrylic crystal, which you can see right here. The version after this was the 14060 when they incorporated the sapphire crystal. Now this must be a later 5513 because of the gold surrounds on the indices. This is a no-box, no-papers example. Here's the price in bot that comes out to 13,340 USD. All right, so some used watch shops here in Bangkok. Prices are high. Pieces often come no box, no papers. And, you know, this isn't the place I would be buying a watch. I would feel kind of uncomfortable, especially buying it and taking it to another country. I'd really want these pieces checked out. Uh, I didn't have any suspicion as far as authenticity but little things like parts and bezel inserts and you know the question of why it doesn't come with papers you know is it um, is there some nefarious reason but some really interesting watches and you you have to wonder you know a 5513 or you know some of these early GMTs how did they make their way to these shops in Bangkok, um, if only they could talk. And we will cut this tangent short. All right, the very last couple of real authentic Rolex watches, the 16600 Sea Dweller, probably my favorite of the sub-esque watches, and the very last real watch you will see in this video, the pre-ceramic Kermit, non-fat four version, no box, no papers, just as is. So some of the shops here are kind of antsy about me taking photographs. So I, I missed out on some kind of cool vintage GMTs because of that. You know, they, they wouldn't let me take a picture or take video or try it on really. I mean, I could try it on, but I couldn't take a photo. So you'll just have to trust me. There are some cool pre-ceramic pieces here, but uh, again, they're just a little bit suspicious of picture taking. I, I think they think who knows you're going to try to sell it on eBay or something. I don't know. This empty square is right in the middle of Bangkok. I guess they're clearing it out for a shopping center, mall of some sort.
Okay. So, how much is this one? One thousand nine hundred. Today, business time, we will try five. Well, let's see. I mean, I, I, I could maybe give you something like fifty, like five hundred. Five hundred. Bluesy. I have some of them. Look. I seem to see a bit of patina on this uh, bluesy. It's, it's purpling a bit. Some arena. The black one? Yeah. Blue one. Same thing, this one. Blue gold and black gold. That's the Submariner right yeah, there. Yeah, Submariner. You have a GMT? GMT has. Where did these come from? What, what, what country did these come from? They're from Taiwan, I think. GMT Masters. From Taiwan? Taiwan. China or Taiwan? Oh, yeah. Man, this is pretty cool actually. So, okay, now this is mechanical. Yeah, Do you have quartz? No, no, automatic. Look. How much is this one? It's 2,600. Well, I, I could give you like maybe 500. 500? Yeah. But uh, automatic wise, 500 no, everybody knows. Oh, really? Yeah. This minute. Markers are decisive. I kind of like that. All right, note to Rolex. Although that uh, magnifier needs some help. Free ceramic, free ceramic coat, and it's a unidirectional bezel. A, a lot of uh, rollback, as you can imagine. So it's an automatic movement watch. Do you have any any more any uh, quartz? Okay, I come here. Well, hold on, hold on. How much is quartz? Okay, this could you do this for 500? No, no, this one okay, but this one automatically no have. Do you do a thousand? Yeah. A thousand? Yeah. Okay, do you, do you have quartz? Quartz? Quartz, yeah. Quartz, this one, quartz. Do you have the, the no, GMT? No, 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 quartz. Only in automatic? Only automatic, yeah. Quartz no have, everybody no have. Okay. Yeah. A pre-ceramic Rolex GMT Master 2 16710 Coke, by far my favorite of the fake Rolex watches I saw in Bangkok. You know, if I'd been able to find this in quartz, I just might have picked it up for fun. All right, Bangkok, Bangkok fruits, mangoes. All right, so uh, confessions of a mango addict, uh, mango and sticky rice. I've got three of them here. 50 baht a pop. Why does a single man need three of these? Confessions of a mango and sticky rice addict. Our last batch of fake Rolexes, we've got a Cookie Monster right here and then a Sermit on a Jubilee bracelet, which is a very unique configuration. All of these were kind of expensive couple hundred dollars I want to say they had many different versions and um, many different types of fake watches and different brands and whatnot and what I thought was kind of interesting this from an alternative universe one in which Rolex incorporated the ceramic bezel into the Explore 2 this came through a portal only found in Bangkok and is a piece that transcends space and time You know, there's been a lot of debate about what is true wealth, and I think the leading thought is that you ain't got nothing if you don't have health, so health is at the top of the list. I'm here to tell you that's wrong. It's mango and sticky rice. Whoever dies with more mango and sticky rice wins. And that, dear viewer, concludes my videos from Bangkok. And here I am at the airport wearing the Iconaut and I use the chronograph to time the moment I left my hotel room to the moment I got right in front of the gate ready to board the plane. Thank you for watching. Take care and I will see you next time.